The title for this sharing will be, uh, Who Will Die That Others May Enter In? Who Will Die That Others May Enter In? Um, and in uh, Deuteronomy 32, that's where we'll be going if you want to start to turn there. Um, in that chapter, Deuteronomy 32, God gives Moses a real blessing, a great blessing. He's allowed to go up high, if you will, and I'll explain that. Um, he's able to ascend up to the top of Mount Nebo. And um, it's, uh, you know, when you use that word ascend, he's allowed to ascend up to the top of Mount Nebo. And how many of us as Christians desire to ascend also, to ascend up? And so Deuteronomy 32 and just verse 48 and 49 and the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, Abiram, unto Mount Nebo. There, and, and, well, we'll just stop there. So, he goes up, he ascends up to that mountain, and he's, um, he's even blessed further, as we'll read on. He's blessed further in that he's allowed to view all of the land, the whole land, the whole promised land from Mount Nebo, God allows him to, to see. And in that seeing, he is able to see further because he's seeing from God's perspective. He's seeing from above. He was able to see further than he ever could before. He's able to glimpse things more from the heart of the Lord and um, to, um, to be blessed, to uh, take in the place that God has chosen for Israel and the place where they are headed, not yet. They're not there yet. Um, but, but he is seeing the fullness from God's point of view, from being, from being up. And so... Uh, the next verse is uh, uh, 48 through 52. This is Deuteronomy 32. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into the mountain of Byram, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. And behold the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. So, um, so he's literally seeing what none of the others have seen. They're all going. They're all on their way to the promised land. Um, that's been the clarion call from the very beginning. And so they are, they are, all of them want to see the land. But Moses is the one who is seeing the land, and he's seeing it from a higher position than what they would see when they enter into. And so... He's able to look on, as I said, what God sees from above. And if you've ever read in, in the scriptures, and it's really a blessing, if you ever read in the scriptures the Lord who begins to talk about the promised land, it's a really special thing. It's a really special thing. Um, it is, he speaks of it in such high terms, and it's just a, a precious thing to the Lord. And so... Um, Moses, in that case, is actually beginning to fellowship with God from above and from his viewpoint and from his joy, like the prodigal son, from the father's joy uh, to take it in, to take it in, to take it in. And so, um, and so in that verse 49, just skipping little parts in there, and, and behold the land. And behold the land which I give. <laughs> precious, precious. All right, so the next verses we're going to read, um, it kind of throws us off. I mean, here we've, um, you know, we're having a special moment in this, 
the words that come forth begin to upset that special moment. And to some, it might even sound like, well, this is the devil talking, not God, after, after this. And this is verse 48 through 52, beginning of the verse, actually, uh, 50 that I'll read. Um, Behold the land that I will give, and then, and die in the mount whether thou goest up, and be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people. And so it's, uh, it was like a special privilege and a special event and a special thing that was going on between Moses and God. And then, but then as God is explaining it to him, he says, but you're going up there to die. And uh, so what we get is, uh, let's go over to Deuteronomy 34 because the conversation we heard in 32 is just God's conversation with him. But what we're going to hear is in 34 is the actual event of that. Um, Deuteronomy 34, verse 1 through 6. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan and all Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh and all the land of Judah unto the uttermost sea and the south and the plains of the valley of Jericho and the city of palm trees unto Zor. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. And I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go in. So, um, uh, that's just a, you know, I mean, it's just... It's such a downer. It's such a discouraging thing. I, I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes. And it was, what is he talking about? He's talking about the fulfillment, at least up to that point, and in terms of the Jews, the fulfillment of all that God promised to Abraham and to Isaac and to, to Jacob and all of the, the whole nation raised up of God through one man, Abraham. Uh, and Moses is seeing it all. But he's not just seeing it. God showed it to him. And that's what the scripture says here. And God showed. So you, you know, you say, well, how could God show us such great things and then keep it from us? You know, that doesn't seem fair. What kind of God is this that would would take us up and show us all these wonderful things and then tell us we're not gonna we're not gonna enter into it. We're not going to enter into it. Um, so verse 5 there in Deuteronomy 34. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. And so um, the, the scriptures mention in one place that he didn't enter in. Moses wasn't able to enter in because he had sinned against God in relationship to striking the stone the second time, the rock the second time. And so he wasn't able to enter in because of that. And yet, um, when we look at verse 10 and 10 through 12, we began to see the people's view and really the actual view on all these fronts of what Moses did do. Okay, so verses 10 through 12. And this is at his, bear, or at his death. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. In all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land and in all that mighty hand and in all that great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. So clearly, you know, the people, the, the children of Israel believed, the people of God believed that Moses was a man of God and was a, a uh, precious 
precious leader, if you will. Um, and so what we've read is the, is the testimony of Moses uh, and his life before death. Before death. This is all the great things. This is all the adulation. This is all the, it extols the man and it extols the ministry and um, it speaks what he did in this life. What he did in this life. Okay. So, if you think about it now, and you, maybe you, you can help me with this, although we, we can't hear one another. If you think about it, the people sinned more than Moses ever sinned. In fact, it only talks about one incident with Moses, but he's not entering in. But they are. They are getting all of the sin. Think of all the bad things. Think of all of the incidences that happened. Um, they sinned against God in terrible ways. And, um, and yet, they're going to enter in and Moses is not going to enter in. Okay, so um, so it reminded me of a truth that we've talked about a lot, actually, um, and that is that um, that there is hope beyond our failures, and there is hope beyond our strengths or lack of strength. There is hope because of Christ and Him crucified. And the person I usually bring up at this point is, is the thief on one side of Jesus. And, and he deserved to die, and most of you know, you know this, but it adds to what I want to close out with. And that is that he's hanging on the cross and he's dying for his own sins and his own failures. And he, he shuts the mouth of the other thief uh, and he says, we deserve to die, but this man doesn't, okay? But he never talks about God delivering himself. Jesus is the only one who brings it and says, this day you'll be with me. You'll be with me. He doesn't say you're going to heaven. <laughs> he says, and, and in a very real sense, he's not really pointing out that you're going to go to paradise. He's pointing out, you're going to be with me wherever I go, in this case. Paradise, as most people read that. So, in the case of the thief, he ended up, even though he had his own death, he didn't die that death. He died a death that was with Jesus, that he would be with Jesus in that death. And so, I believe that that's the case with Moses. I believe that's exactly what happened with Moses. So, I'm just going to read a a few sentences here, uh, leading up to it again, that Moses had failed, and so it looks like you're not going to enter into the land, and you can say, okay, well, this, I'm going to just die my own death then and never get to see, uh, never get to enter into the land and this and that, or I can be with the Lord in his death. And so I wrote this, but now the man, Moses, who has seen the great future of Israel entering into the promised land, because that's what he's seeing. He's seeing the future. He's seeing that Israel is going to, God's going to take Israel into the promised land. And Moses isn't going in. But now the man who has seen the great future of Israel entering into the promised land before it even happens must now take it all, everything that he saw, take it all down into death. He takes all the view of all the land and of all of Israel, and now he has to take it all down into death. May this death bless the trip of those who will one day enter in. The cross first, then resurrection. Who will die for others that they may enter in? And so we have, we have Moses, and I'll, I'll confirm this with at least what I believe happened in the New Testament. You have Moses with a choice. I can, just, I can just die and not enter in because of my own sin, 
or I can die a death that will cause them to enter and that will cover the people of God so that they might experience all of this and trust the Lord because I'm going to enter into his death. So, um, so let's look at Moses' testimony after his death. We heard the testimony that happened while he was alive on the earth, but now he has a testimony after death. And um, that's in Matthew 17, where it talks about the Mount of Transfiguration. Um, and his testimony begins to be that the revealing, the revealing of Christ will, will be seen and everyone else, including himself and Elijah and the disciples, will be overshadowed. Christ will be revealed and no one else is going to be seen, not even, not even him in his joining with Jesus' death, as it were. Uh, and that's his, that's his testimony after his death. And so in uh, Matthew 17, we see, we're going to see that Moses did enter the land, because he's in the land right now in Matthew 17. He did enter the land. That means that if it had been just his death, then God said, you're not going to enter the land. Remember that. If it was really his death, God said, you're not going to enter the land. But somewhere he aligned himself with the Lord. And in that, here he is. He's there with Jesus. And uh, so let's um, uh, read Matthew 17, verse 1 through 8. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him, Elijah talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto him, unto Jesus, Lord, it be good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make thee three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he yet spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid, and Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. So Moses finally shows up in the land, but Israel had already entered the land a long time ago. And he went down into death that that might take place. So for Moses standing there on the top of Mount Nebo and looking over it, his entrance in was not about him. It wasn't about him. It was about them. It was about others. And, um, and, and his testimony there with Jesus, and remember one place in the scriptures it says that Moses and Elijah are talking with Jesus about his death, about the death of the cross that he's about to, to take. And so, so this, this for Moses is not about his great uh, ministry or accomplishments or his own personal greatness. Um, it's about a death to himself so that only Jesus will be seen and so that others may enter in. Only Jesus will be glorified whereby others may enter in. Only Jesus will be um, extolled and nobody will gather and talk about the great things that Moses did anymore. He doesn't want that. He wants to be overshadowed, so only Jesus will be seen. And, um, and the, the interesting thing is, as I mentioned, is that they were talking about Jesus' death. Jesus is about to die so that we might enter in. That's what's about to happen. And Jesus is, it's all one process. It's all one thing. And here Jesus, very soon, 
will be, I mean, it's a great moment here on the Mount of Transfiguration, but very soon, very soon, uh, Jesus will be rejected. Jesus will be lied about. Even, even his disciples will run and hide. It will be, everybody is, uh, it's, it's kind of like Moses. Well, Moses, you failed, and your ministry really didn't, you know, I mean, hadn't brought them in yet, and you certainly are not coming in. Um, so we can live in our failures. We can just sit there and just moan about how we failed or this didn't work out or, you know, this person messed me up or whatever. We can go through all of that stuff. Um, and here Jesus is on the verge of rejection and being crucified, but his death is going to be not for himself. It's going to be so that others can enter in also, just like what we're talking about here. And so in closing, I just wrote, would it be too painful to us to lose all that was in the vision from Nebo? In other words, all the vision that God showed us. You know, you know, all the prophecies and the words that people give us of the great things we're going to do and, and all of the promise that seems to come at times with ministry and all of that. Would it be too painful to us to lose all that was in the vision from Nebo? And would it be too painful to us to die to self that others may enter in? So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you that while the scriptures don't just necessarily say uh, that the things that I shared right here are what took place behind the scenes, we have Matthew 27 that absolutely shows that Moses did enter in. And we, have, we see it as a resurrection as he's there in the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. And we see it as a fellowship as they discuss together Jesus' death and Jesus going into the death that everyone else may enter in. And we see the pattern over and over. We see the, we see the necessity of dying many times to the vision. We see it with Joseph. We see it with um, Jacob who while sleeping on a hard rock, is awakened to a vision and just this incredible vision. And yet, he turns around and goes into a far country and basically has to die to the things that happened at Bethel until he returns, until he returns to Bethel. And then the vision is renewed for one who is no longer Jacob because he died, but he's Israel, prince with God. So Lord, just um, help us to not wrestle so much with death, but to find it as maybe our best friend because it is Christ, fruit crucified, it's death. It's not even our death, it's our death with him. It's his death, and we just melt into him, and we also come up with him. But Lord, it is by him, and it is to him, and through him that all of this takes place, so that, so that our testimony when we live will be one thing about all the things we did and all of the things we said, but our testimony after death will be more glorious about those who entered in and about Jesus only being seen. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. See you next time.